This is breaking news from News 8. We are following breaking news this morning. One person is dead after a police involved shooting inside a family dollar on West Main Street in Rochester. Investigators telling us the suspect there tried to rob the store before being fired upon by officers. Carmela Boykin is live at the Public Safety Building with the latest. Carmela, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Leah. Police are still investigating a shooting that happened at 9.30 p.m. last night. Officers walked into what is described as a robbery in progress. Police say they arrived at the scene and exchanged fire with the suspect. The individual was pronounced dead at the scene. No officers, customers, or employees were hurt. Police Chief Cynthia Harriet Sullivan says the investigation is ongoing. We're getting our details straight and invest in uh, conducting interviews, getting information from people. So it's going to it's going to take a little bit before we have a full uh, explanation about what happened from the point that the incident started to where we have the issue. And as with any fatal shooting involving a New York police officer, the state attorney general's office will be taking over the investigation. RPD officials are expected to give an update later today. In Rochester, Carmela Boykin, News 8. Mark and Leah. Carmela, thank you. Uh, elsewhere, an investigation underway after a separate shooting overnight in Rochester. Police responded to Thomas Street just after midnight. They say a 44-year-old man was shot in the upper body there and taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. There are no suspects in custody. Well, all of this as the Rochester Police Department begins its search for a new chief. Chief Cynthia Harriet Sullivan announcing her resignation yesterday. She will step down from her position next week. Chief Harriet Sullivan was appointed as interim chief last October after former police chief Laurent Singletary was fired in the wake of Daniel Prude's death investigation becoming public. I've had a great team. Um, uh, great people that stood by me, worked hard. Like I say, often you don't get to see the things that go on behind the scenes. You do it for the interim and you see what Deputy happens. Chief of Operations David Smith will take over as chief beginning October 13th. Democratic mayoral nominee Malik Evans responding to the resignation as well, saying in part, I want to thank Interim Chief Harriet Sullivan for her many years of service to the Rochester Police Department. She stepped up and served as Interim Chief during a challenging time for the department. She should be commended for embracing the challenge. I wish her all the best in her future endeavors. Evans added he is looking forward to the important search for a permanent police chief. Mike Mazio, the president of the Rochester Police Union, responding to Chief Harriet Sullivan's announcement as well. He claims her job was essentially to, quote, stop the leaks during what's been a chaotic year. I think that what was needed and what is still needed is some strong leadership in the police department, some consistency. Uh, it takes anyone a period of time to really learn a job. And we're going through probably the worst time in policing in the last few years. And uh, to l learn during that period of time uh, makes it very, very difficult. For more statements from local officials, including the Rochester Police Accountability Board, all you have to do is head to our website. We're at rochesterfirst.com. New this morning, the Genesee County Sheriff's Office is investigating a crash involving a Mercy Flight helicopter. Deputies say around 9.30 last night, the aircraft made a hard landing at the Genesee County Airport after returning from Strong Memorial Hospital. All crew members did make it out of that helicopter safely and were taken to the hospital as a precaution. All right, if you're about to head out the door, take note, the visibility not so hot out there right now, right, James? That's correct, yeah. A lot of Monroe County dealing with some really thick fog. We'll show you the traffic cams in about 30 seconds, but I wanted to show you what else looks nice. Mm. In Canandaigua, hey. Good story over yes. Canandaigua. Lake. That oh, is beautiful. Hey. That's where you want to be. Not so bad. Those viewers in the finger locks are saying, uh, what fog? This is, looks right. great. Uh, we like that. We like to see that. And if you are uh, steeped in fog right now, like much of uh, Rochester is, this is what you can expect as we get later this morning. We will see some clearing, and we are going to see a little bit of sun. If you're heading out in the next few minutes to go on a light jog or a dog walk, uh, besides the fog, it should be a decent morning, pretty comfortable around 60. Then we warm up nicely into the low to mid 70s. We'll have a last look at the weekend forecast coming up. Mark. All right, James, uh, thank you. Uh, you mentioned our sunrise traffic and a look at uh, at least one of the traffic cams right there, 390 at Brooks Ave by the airport. Uh, 
Tough to make out through the fog, but uh, cars are flowing well in both directions there. There is an accident on Atlantic Avenue at Fairport Nine Mile Point Road in Penfield and another on East River Road at Lehigh Station Road in Henrietta. And a reminder, construction on the inner loop in Rochester, 490 East at State Street. Again, 390 and 590, though, running on time. With less than two weeks until the country defaults, Democrats and Republicans finally nearing a deal to raise the debt ceiling. Joined again by Washington correspondent Raquel Martin this morning, live in D.C. Raquel, good morning. Yesterday, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell offered Democrats a short-term fix. What was included in that proposal? Well, we have not seen the details of this proposal just yet. We know that uh, the Republicans and Democrats at the table were up late trying to get to terms that they could move forward on. We know that initially Republicans offered to raise the debt ceiling by $300 billion, but Democrats are pushing for more. So we'll have to wait and see maybe if we get to a deal today uh, what the terms might be. But we do know that they want to fund the government until uh, December and it would be a short term deal. So Raquel, where does the tentative agreement go from here? Well, that is the big question. We know that uh, Senator McConnell presented the plan as a short-term fix so that it would give Democrats more time to address the larger crisis at hand. Uh, but it's unclear exactly how Democrats will try to resolve it moving forward. We know they say they are not interested in using the reconciliation process, which is the same process they're using right now to try and push the president's agenda forward in the Senate. Uh, so we might be right back to square one come December, uh, but we'll have to wait and see how Democrats Democrats plan on resolving this. Yeah, we'll be watching. Raquel, thank you so much. The Senate is adjourned until 10 o'clock this morning, at which point a vote could be held on the short-term deal. We'll continue to follow that. Yes. Meanwhile, a federal judge halting enforcement of the Texas abortion law that bans nearly all abortions in that state. The ruling says the law is being put on hold as legal battles move through federal courts. The judge siding with the Biden administration who sued to halt the law. This pause on the enforcement will have immediate effect on those in Texas seeking health care providers in other parts of the country to perform abortions. All right, uh, staying in Texas, a large oil spill reported at a refinery there. Officials say it forced the closure of at least one road. No word yet on just how much oil spilled, but you see the footage there. The director of Homeland Security for the Texas City blaming the spill on a failure of a pump seal there. And a powerful 5.7 magnitude earthquake shaking parts of Pakistan overnight, killing at least 11 people, according to officials. They're reporting more than 200 people injured as well. Extensive building damage has also been reported. All right, here's what some folks might be talking about at the uh, water cooler this morning. It was the Red Sox and Yankees uh, a couple of days ago. Last night, it was the Dodgers Rays and the fires. Cardinals. Take a listen. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk them off. Chris Taylor. That's how you do it. That's awesome. Dodgers with a walk-off two-run homer in the bottom of the ninth inning. Chris Taylor, the man, belting it. That sends the Dodgers to the National League Division Series. They will face the San Francisco Giants. That's going to be a great series. Yes. Game one set for tomorrow at 9.30. Wow. Fun time of year for sports fans, no question. That celebration uh, made my hair stand up a little bit. I know. Yeah. Gets you going, right? It does. <laughs> So cool. That's uh, very exciting. And uh, maybe you have uh, got a little some middle school and high school sports today as we head off to uh, school. Bus stop forecast. And we've got that fog this morning. Temperatures in the 60s. Uh, and then by the afternoon, we climb into the 70s. So we'll get rewarded uh, for the fog that we have to deal with this morning. Sunrise about to quarter after 7. So about 20 minutes from now, we'll start to see a little bit more light. But we're getting a little bit twilight right now. News 8, eight-day forecast. Uh, let's talk about the weekend. Why not? Saturday, we've had rain showers in the forecast. But... The good news is a lot of us will see dry time. Most of the day, I think, is dry for, uh, for a lot of folks, but just a couple of rain showers mixed in there. And then Sunday looks great, kind of a reverse of last weekend. We'll call it mid-70s there. So uh, nice to see that. And the warm stretch continues. Um, it's I really seemingly could last to the beginning of next week. Yeah, really impacting the fall colors, too, you were saying. Yeah, it's just not changing, uh, mm -hmm. amazingly. And the leaves, they don't care. They'll take their time. They're not going to change until those overnight lows get to where they should be in the 40s. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.
Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.